That one doesn't have a record button, it's weird, actually. It's, um, and also, annoyingly, see how these two have got red lights? So I know they're rolling. Yeah. That's why I put these two on you and me. That one is just on me. I don't know if it's recording or not. So, well. you have to just hope shoes off. Yep. Come. Well. All right, let's go. Yes. Welcome back to another episode of the Devoted Creatives Podcast. Today, I'm with a very good friend of mine and fellow creator, but I'll let him introduce himself. <laughs> Mayday, for the purposes of our audience of two now, maybe, two people watching it. <laughs> can you, can, it's my mom and like one of my best mates, probably. Um, yeah. For the purposes of the audience, can you tell people who you are and what you do? Okay, so my name's Mayday Carter. I am a creative artist, music producer, video editor, <laughs> just all round creative. What don't you do is the question. It's, that is actually, <laughs> to be fair. So yeah, everything creatively I love and yeah, that's my, my thing. And how did you get started? How did I get started? When did you know you were a creator? Good question. Well, I mean, I, I started drawing and stuff. That was like the first thing. And I stopped that for many years. And now I've just back, just got back to it in December. Um, but musically, well, even acting as well. <laughs> yeah, I used to do acting as well. This guy's a slash. Yeah, no, no, slash, we, we, slash that for real. He's a slash. Yeah, when I was in when I was in school, I fell in love with acting. Loved it. I uh, went to this drama school straight after uh, school, uh, and Florentini. Uh, it was that was a very new school as well, so they barely knew what I was doing. But I got an acting gig from that. And then, then I felt, then I fell in love with music uh, through um, PlayStation. Okay. So when I was doing that, I just, just loved. Hang it. on, PlayStation. You talking about that game that you could like, you could program songs. Yeah. What was that called? Music uh, two thousand. Yeah, two, you had music generator, and then you had music two thousand. Those games were sick. Bro, well, so. I actually, I actually, because I, I had a similar thing. I didn't really know about production or anything like that. Really, yeah. I knew I liked I liked music, obviously, but that was the first time in the house like you could actually make music. This is I it. I think this is it without instruments. But the thing, the thing is, I felt like I fell in love with it mainly because of the visuals, like because you could like do a music video and then put music oh, yeah. behind it. Yeah. So I was more... This is, this is a major throwback. It. Trust me. This is a major like, throwback. I, I, I completely look forgot about that game. I need to look at it and, and see how it looks because I can, it's just fade memory. Yeah. But yeah, I literally used to make music on that and, and a couple of friends was like, yo, you're good at this. And I was like, really? Found out that you could actually study this in college. Mm. And that shit blew my mind. Yeah. So yeah, and then I haven't really looked back since I had that. I had a moment where I was like acting versus music. And I said, I felt like acting felt more natural to me. Yeah. So I wanted to just focus and learn music. And yep, here we are. So I guess you thought at that time, music was a weakness you wanted to work on. Exactly that. Out of, out of your strengths at the time. Exactly. But you've that. always been quite an active person. Like you like your sports mm -hmm. as well. Oh, I love sports and love activities from snowboarding to wakeboarding. A lot of boards stuff, actually. <laughs> skateboarding. <laughs> skateboarding. I, I gave that a go. I'm, I'm okay. I, I wouldn't... I can't wouldn't do any ollies. Huh? You wouldn't I, would, I definitely wouldn't call myself a skater. Like, a few times I used to, like, just um, skate to the barbershop to the point where they would call me um, sca skateboarder or something like that, whatever they called me in the yard. yard uh, you always get nicknames at the barbershop. This is it, man. So, I was London boy. London boy. <laughs> <laughs> right, London boy. <laughs> Hey, London boy. I was the only one to know with an English accent. That's funny. That's <laughs> My barbershop was a yard. That's, that's hard. I could never understand what anyone was saying either. <laughs> this is one of those things. So your production, that's kind of where we met when you yep. started studying production. Yep. How did you turn that into a career? Good question. I've, I mean, sometimes I don't even know if I feel like uh, it's, I'm in that career place. I still sometimes feel like on the outside, but I'm obviously doing it. I've been doing it for many years. Um, it's just, I literally just throw myself into stuff and then we just see how it goes. Just keep flowing and then it leads to this, it leads to that. I uh, opened up my studio in like my spare bedroom at the time in Forest Hill and just would work with every and anyone. And it just kind of built from there to the point where then go into, uh, started an intern thing at Metropolis Studios, 
worked there for six years, did everything. Now, don't just gloss over Metropolis Studios, bro. <laughs> Metropolis Studios is a big deal. Big deal, for real. Like, give people an idea of the kind of people that you came across at Metropolis while you were there. Ah, for everyone from Drake, Rihanna, Kendrick Lamar, Will I Am, uh, you name it, uh, Dappy, K Coke. Um, everybody everybody like literally. that's the place where people go to get their tracks mastered yep. yeah mastered Ma that's that's their main thing right now but they do recording they do like events there as well yeah man all of that good stuff and and they used to have offices in there so you would have different companies working there like uh maybe some people know um who sampled Oh yeah, the, yeah. W the website. Yeah, I didn't know they were based there. Yeah, they were. I love they used that website. To, yeah, I, yeah, they're so cool as well. They're cool yeah. guys, man. But I don't, they I don't must work so hard to actually work out where all the samples yeah, came I, from. Yeah, they, they 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 told me a few times like, yeah, come check it out. So I, I wanted to know how they do it because yeah. it's just amazing. So how do they do it? I don't know because I still <sighs> I didn't get I never took the Made opportunity it. to go in. I was to, always working. You need man. to hit them up again. I know, I know. But, yeah. What was it like working in that kind of environment with all these like mega stars? I mean, in and out of the studios. Amazing. Um, so for me, as, especially at one stage, so I remember when Rihanna had a, a camp there, so, and I was interning. So the place the was locked down. It was locked down, like, literally. So everyone was floating around there, like, great producers and songwriters that are, like, levels even more now. They were just hanging around, floating around, and I just was like... First, I was trying to be all professional and stuff, but I was like, man, I got to just... I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I walked around with my headphones. Don't try this at home, guys. I promise you, it might not be great. But <laughs> I just walked around with my headphones and my phone. I just like, oh, can I play you something? Like, and... To Rihanna? Not to Rihanna. I was going to say, bro. No, no, <laughs> Rihanna bold. just... No, no, Rihanna just would just turn up on the occasion. It was like songwriters and producers just go in at it, mm. working on some stuff, and then maybe at the end of the week or a couple of days later, she would check some, the good stuff out. But the songwriters and producers, I'd play them stuff. I had, like, two songs, two beats, and I was getting a lot of attention from that. They was like, I love it, but... Like Still, one. it's quite brave. Yeah, yeah, it was, man. I had just had to. I was just like, you know what? Even like Ty Ty, for example, just spoke to him, like just bumped into him on the outside when I was just going for lunch or whatever. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll put you in with, with some songwriters. And just literally put me in with some songwriters. But yeah. the songwriters was baffled why I was there because they knew <laughs> Tell me. Who's a, this guy? It's like, who's Mr. <laughs> intern? Like, what's he doing? But then when I press play, it's like, oh, okay. okay. So then I made connections like that. Um, but really and truthfully, what that taught me is you got to strike while the iron's hot because there was so much connection and good vibes there. And then they were like, yeah, hit me up when you're in L.A. And then I hit them up when I'm in L.A. Like, they're just busy doing late, what they're yeah. doing now. It's and too late. So it's a bunch of stuff like that. Um, so, but the, one of the key parts to that story is I used to work on night reception. Mm. So I would, again, guys, <laughs> I wouldn't... <laughs> This isn't like legitimate stuff I would say to just do, but I just was like- You're was, feeling brave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like at the like night reception, I'm basically one of the the main people there. You don't really have like uh, the studio manager and stuff. It's the engineers and the artists and it, me. So I'm the first point of call you see. So I just had my speakers set up there, keyboard, laptop, and just made beats. And I attracted At a the lot desk. of attention. Yes, I attracted a lot of attention from that. I had Kendrick Lamar um, rap into one of my beats. Wow! As he was walking down the stairs, um, just and then he came right to the desk and was rapping for like another thirty more seconds or so. Bro, that's a moment, bro. It was a complete moment. Like <laughs> I, would, I was just like, "Is this happening?" Like, and then yeah, literally made contact with his manager because his manager separately heard my stuff. And he shouted from all the way at the top of the back. He's like, he's like, what's that? Whose is that? I said, oh, I'm making that now. He's like, send that to me. And he just went into, went back into the studio. I was like, mad. How am I sending this to him though? He's just, yeah. where's he gone? I don't have your details. <laughs> <laughs> but then he came and gave me his his details and stuff, and I connected with him. But same thing. It's like when I got to LA, didn't really get to connect. People but were too busy. Yeah, but yeah, lots, so many stories. Connected with Will I Am and Emily Sande. He's now a mutual friend of both of us. Yes, there you go. So met met with him, worked on some stuff for um, Black Eyed Peas, and yeah, man, it's 
just been building, just building. What were some of the major lessons you learned at that time? Because that was quite a critical time it in was. your, your career was. so far. Oh, man. Everything is balance. And I feel like I was overdoing. I'm always, I, well, I used to be always overdoing something. So I was like working the maddest hours at Metropolis. So when I'm working the maddest hours, I'm not really getting time to super create because the stuff I was making there is like cool, but I'm just, I'm just mucking around yeah, really, yeah. which is probably a good thing as well because that's probably why they was connecting with it. But to me, I, I didn't feel like I had the chance to refine it. And but you were telling me about stuff. some days you'd finish work at like the AMs, yep. sleep for an hour and an then be hour, back at work. And be back at work. It was like that. <laughs> it was like a proper hustle. That's not healthy, man. It, it wasn't. <laughs> wild. It wasn't. And, and, and to make things worse as well, if I had a bit more extra time, I'd go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> And I and I was wondering why I wasn't losing any weight or anything because I wasn't treating my body right. Like, yeah. so it was all of that stuff, man. But it was it was amazing, and I and yeah, so I learned just balance really because something is going getting away, and you don't have to do that. You don't have to do too much. Mm. Just stay in your lane. Just keep going. Keep focusing, and it will just it will make sense. You can't force these things. So it's a bunch of stuff like that, basically. Another thing I noticed while you were at Metropolis is you made a transition from focusing on yourself as a producer, mm -hmm. trying to make music for other people, to mm -hmm. be to focusing more of yourself as an artist. Yeah. Why did you decide to make that transition, and how's that been? Man, so I just yeah, I, I got to the stage. You had your where Kanye moment. I had my Kanye <laughs> moment. I always like I always wanted a Kanye moment and a Pharrell moment, uh, but I wanted to get the big placements first and then just kind of sneak in hooks here and there and, mm. and, and stuff like that. But everyone's uh, journey is different. So um, one of the major uh, situations with that was, is when I first went to LA, uh, so I would work at Metropolis, build up money, go to LA for three months, come back, make some more money, go back. And the first time I went there, because I was thinking, yeah, I'm just going to get a visa. <laughs> it was be just easy like that. Green card. Yeah, all of that. And it was like, nope, you need this, 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 but no wonder I'm, Adele's living over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you can you can get in there with like bare minimal. So that's so one of the um, lawyers I was talking to, there was like, he was like, yeah, like no, if you just have some stuff out published, published, or just you know, have your own stuff out, that can help. And then just be seen with a couple influential people, get some letters from people that uh, are in the industry and stuff like that. So I was like, alright, cool. So I came back to the UK with the idea of Ticket to LA. I'm gonna make an EP called Ticket to LA and that's what's gonna get me to LA. So I started working on that, but I started overthinking because I wanted it to be perfect, yada, yada, yada. Maybe fast forward it. I wasn't really properly going for it, but I was just was doing it here and there. Mm. Then I made a track, played it to Will I Am. And Will I Am was like, I love this. You need to put this out, like properly, going for it and I said yeah and he goes Which you need to shoot it? um it's not come out it's not come out actually. he's still ain't put it out I, no 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 it w what was that about striking by the iron top I know exactly <laughs> but this is what I'm saying I've been learning all this all this time and so this is for the people is like you got to strike when the iron's hot but so uh yeah he I said to him like I, I don't have like the budget to make the video or whatever and he was like like come to LA use my director use my team I Damn. was like, all right, cool. He's like, when you gonna? I said, when you gonna be there next? He was like, April. I was like, all right, bet. Literally, I think the next day, I booked my ticket, went there, was there for six weeks. Uh, didn't happen because he was just bouncing all over the world. He was, he was doing well, I am. Yeah. So I'm calling him like, yo, are you back yet? <laughs> nah, I'm in uh, Korea. <laughs> yo, you back yet? <laughs> nah, I'm in New York. So it was literally that. Man. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I came home without it and I just was a bit gutted to be fair. And then the journey just started continue getting more, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Let's get into just it, figuring man. it out, man. Let's get into it. Yeah, that so was the time. You spent a lot of time in LA. Talk, talk to us about LA. Why, why did you pick LA as well? Why, of all places? Why was that where you thought well, I have to yeah, go? Well, yeah, I felt like that's, that's where it was. And from Metropolis, like the people I was connecting with are from LA. So I was like, oh, it's a given. 
should be out there, right? So, and I, yeah, I was, I was supposed to go with some other uh, producer friends of mine like years before, and we couldn't like work out a time for that was suitable for all of us. Mm. So I just, I just like decided it's time. It's been calling to you. Yeah, it's been calling to me. I booked my ticket. I didn't know where I was staying. I just booked my ticket. And then no I accommodation. Just, no accommodation. This, this is where it started from, bro. I tell you, this is where it started from for this this pattern that I've been doing a lot. <laughs> so hang on. So what happened when you get to LA the first time? So so well, first of all, I bought the ticket, and it's like, and then a week before the the flight. Now, I'm speaking to my good friend Varen Wade. Um, and Shout I, out, Varen. Yep, yeah, my guy. And um, I was like, yeah, man, I'm going to L.A. And he's like, he's like, yeah, when? I was like, literally next week. And he was like, where are you staying? I was like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> this guy. And he was, he was like, oh, you can stay at mine, man. I got, I got a room there. Um, I'm going to be there in a month. I was like, what? So it just started from there, man. It started from there. I was blessed. That's such a massive blessing, like, unbelievable. When I really think about it, it's like so many connections and so many things is like expanded from that. Like I was, <laughs> we called it the trap house because it's like close. Everyone that came into t- town, that's where they would just stay over and stuff. Like, People who came to LA with no plans, no plans, but or they creatives, creatives. Yes, yes. Like um, Eric Bellinger used to um, live there at one stage. Not when I was there, but maybe a year before I, I got there and stuff. Um, some dope, amazing songwriters now that are doing great stuff but the living room sometimes would have seven people in there just Jeez. stayed overnight sleeping bags no no not even sleeping bag <laughs> floor so if you got a sofa it was good there you was like living. one sofa here and then this little kind of uh half sofa thing here and then just, just scattered space. on the floor yeah man. literally like it was that man so yeah that was the vibe that's wild it was definitely man so you, i got to see the real hustle like mm. but i was i was just hustling from i got there just out and about like i'd make some beats with the, these guys and just whatever but i was just i felt like i needed to be out and about and just make my own connections started making connections was working what's um, the process like that in la like where'd you go what's the, bro you go i was doing everything bro i was like i was cold calling record companies cold calling publishing companies uh yeah all types of stuff i was like looking for any events that was happening but the thing with la it's like like everyone is a creative there so mm. you can connect it's just you just got connect, isn't it? Just be brave enough to go for it. Exactly. Okay. So, so it's it's a bunch of stuff like that, man. Um, but yeah, there's too many stories of LA. It's been I've, I've been what's, going what's, for many years. What's some of the craziest things, or one of the craziest things that happened that really taught you something about this journey that you're on? So one time, um, so yeah, like my first trip, I was like. I didn't know like the community was it was it was a it was a weird one because everyone's trying to do their thing but sometimes people can get a bit suspicious like when I just had so much energy as well like mm. I had a new lease of life I just did skydiving as well so I was like excited. Oh, I just excited to just throw myself into this place so I think the excitement was probably a bit too much for some people so I, I probably rubbing people the wrong way a bit um but that made me venture out even more and do my own thing mm-hmm. and uh then in fact i met this uh this guy called nathan who i only met for like 10 seconds like just before i was leaving to la like one of the guys was like oh you should meet mayday he's gonna be in la this uh, nathan's from la and he's like yeah okay hit me up when you get there so out of all of the other artists and stuff i hit up he was the only one that i actually got to meet up with interesting and um and then yeah he just he just put me in contact with a couple people uh, and then one thing in particular, he was just like, okay, you got to meet these guys. One of them was British and they do like a lot of stuff in scores and like the, the movie type soundtracks and mm. stuff like that. And he just threw me in. Deep end. In the deep end. He told, he told them I could mix. He told them. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, like mixing is, is my nemesis sometimes, but he told me I could, he told them I could mix and mm. it's like he's like you mix yeah I was like yeah yeah, yeah I'll do that <laughs> he's like oh like uh, uh, when when do you want to start I said now I got my stuff now and then I just did it <laughs> and the fact I could actually do it and it was a lot easier 
because they were telling me what they wanted. So I was mixing it and it's like, yeah, how's this? It's like, oh, could you bring some of this down? And I knew what I was doing. Cause yeah, because you know your way around the yeah, desk. Yeah, but I just had never mixed for anyone else. Mm. So that got me in. That got me in and I started working with them and built up a great relationship. And so that's one of the greatest lessons is like, be prepared. Just be prepared. Like you said, you told me many years ago, like build, build a parachute on your way down. And yeah. I, and it's literally that, man. That lesson in particular, sometimes you're in a position where you don't know how mm. you're going to get to the next step. Mm. You don't know what that next move is. But the way I approach things is I, in my head, I know that if I jump out of the plane while it's moving, I will figure out a way to build a parachute. Yeah, I just to, will. You because you have to. Because it's know. that or that. Yep. And that's what it is. I, for me, there's no point of being here unless we're prepared to do that. Definitely. And that's what's helped me take those leaps. Definitely. But you've taken those leaps and not even thought about the parachute. This is it. This is it. It's been that. It's been that. Like, it's been that. like because you know what it is? I get instinctive feelings and I know when I need to be somewhere. Mm. I know it. I just know it. And then from I get that feeling, I just go. I'm like, okay, cool. And... I would just have like the magic amount of um, money that's in my account to get the flight alone. And I'm like, to me, that's the first thing. Get the flight, then figure out the rest. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it makes sense to me. <laughs> now you've also shot a couple of music videos out yep. in LA yep. um, that I was very blessed to be able to work with you on. Yep. Talk to the people about those experiences. Those oh my are a bit crazy. gosh. Story. This is the story, man. <laughs> this is the ghetto story. But um, where do I start with this one? Literally, same thing I was saying. Like, I had the feeling I needed to be in L.A. at a certain part in April again. There was something about April, I don't know. And I was like, I have to be there then. And um, and I checked the price of the ticket, and I just I hesitated, and then it went up. And I was like, oh, no. And then now I didn't have the enough. And I was like, damn. I was like, no, but I know I'm supposed to be doing this. Literally, like, even a few days before, and I think I hit up... I met this girl and she used to work for um, like, I think British Airways or something. So I, I hit her, I text, I text her, I said, hey, I had a bright idea that, because I watch a lot of movies. So I was like, <laughs> I was like. <laughs> this guy, I've seen a movie. I've seen it a movie, movie and it worked in the movie. So it must be real life. So in the, like I was in my head, I was thinking there must, I can just turn up to the airport and they're gonna be like cheap deals. Last minute flight. Last minute flights. That ain't that's real. gonna be cheap. I'm telling you and I can ain't catch real. it. And I was like, and I saw I messaged the girl first though. Like I was thinking, yeah, let me check first. And she didn't she didn't message me back. And I, I almost I almost took it personally and almost deleted her number. That's how <laughs> number scorned. I was like, why why is she not <laughs> responding? I need to know now. <laughs> but I left it and then she messaged me like, I think it was like on the Tuesday. She's like, yeah, yeah, I think you could do that. And I was like, all right, cool. Just went to go see my grandma. I said, grandma, I'm out. I'm heading out of the country tomorrow morning. And I just went to the to the airport, but I didn't have enough at the time. So I hollered at uh, one of my good friends, uh, Marlon, aka Sticky Fingers. Thank you, bro. I love you. And I was like, bro, if there's anything you can, like, contribute, bro, I'd appreciate it. I didn't tell him how much. I said, whatever you can. Yeah. Uh, and I think I think it was like it might have been like two hundred he gave me, and then and then I'm 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 on the train now going to uh, Heathrow, and I'm like I don't think this is enough. Mm. Hollered at my little sis. I was like, sis, love you, sis. <laughs> I was like, sis, anything you can contribute would be appreciated. She put like one hundred and fifty now, so whatever I had in my account before that made seven hundred, and so I'm like, this has to be enough. Mind you, I don't know, like 700, mm. I'm just thinking of the flight. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know what I'm eating when I get there and nothing like... You just need to get on the plane. I just need to get on the plane. So I get there, get, I go to Virgin Atlantic and I see the woman. I said, it's early in the morning. It's like seven o'clock. I said, I said, I said hey, I, I just need your cheapest flight to LA today. Like just the cheapest flight. I don't care what time it is. Don't just care what seat it is. What seat it is. I sit on the wing if you'll let me. You get me. And I was like, <laughs> which, what, what, like whatever. <laughs> So she's typing away, and she's like, "I swear they're just typing." Yeah, right. <laughs> That's all I could hear, and I'm just there anticipating. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to hear like a six hundred or something. Mm. And then she goes, "One thousand and I'm like, "Nope." I, I, I was like, to hear that. "I was like, no, no, no." But, but I saw, like, I was in denial. I was like, "No, no, no, no." You, you sure? Like, she's like, 
that's the cheapest one. I was like, for real? I was so baffled. Mm. So I went around to like six or seven other airlines, same thing, 1,000, da, da, da. And I was like, this can't be. I know I'm supposed to be going. I've got my <laughs> whole suitcase and everything. Packed. I'm packed. I'm going today. So then uh, it just hit me. There's a travel agent uh, in Brixton called Sackville. I called them because I spoke to, I think they were the ones that I spoke to first and then the price went up. But I called them and I said, today you need to fly it, yada, yada, yada. Same thing, start hearing the typing going on. Yeah, and then and then the guy was like, hey, yeah, we've got, um, there's one ticket here for 700 pounds. Or, or actually, no, it was 749 and I had 750 pounds. You're lying. One pound <laughs> difference. I kid you not. That's mad. And I said, Yes. I'll take it. I'm not away. I'm not away. That's it. It's not going up. But it, it was still wasn't that easy. Um, spare you the details is I had to call my friend because they couldn't take the last minute booking over the phone just in case, you know, I never come back or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I had to call my friend, uh, Vernon. To go to the store. Love you too, bro. And then he had to stop. He stopped work, went to the store. Yeah, Vernon's a real one, boy. Listen, real one. Because as well, what happened as well, my, uh, my credit on my phone data ran out as well like i couldn't even do it and it, like it was mad but got there the devil was trying to keep you here listen and i was Mate. not i was not gonna be stopped <laughs> not today yeah so yeah boom made it onto the plane and what where airline was it um virgin that's hilarious virgin yeah. so virgin can give you that same flight I, I apparently not that's mad it is and i Fair. just i just sat on that plane like yes i made it <laughs> And then and Vernon was so like flipping, taken back. He was like, "Bro, listen, here's 150. This should like I don't know how long this keep it going, but he, he put 150 in my account. So again, have blessed friends around you like like how I have literally. And yeah, so everything went well. Well, I didn't know I was staying obviously, but I actually hit up a friend prior. Um, who used to be in the trap house in LA, but now he's he was doing well for himself or whatever. I hit him up. I don't think he actually took me seriously. I told him my plan, and I don't think he took me seriously. So I messaged him saying, yeah, I, I, I'm on the plane, bro. Um, but yeah, so when I got there, I had to like um, hit him up. I was at the airport for a couple hours, but then he sent me an address, and then I got to stay with him. Nice. And then the other part to the story is, soon as that 150 ran out, a nice bit of change came through randomly. I was not <laughs> expecting it. And I was like, what <clears throat> is this? Literally, <clears throat> I was down to like my last couple pounds. <clears throat> and then this money just came through. Mad. And I was like, ah. <laughs> Angel singing. <laughs> Angel singing, bro. And I was like, all right, cool. I got to invest this. And then that's when, that's when Mayday Carter was born. <laughs> I was like, because uh, I was working on these tracks and played them for DJ Semtex and Semtex loved them and he was trying to get them placed with a few artists and it wasn't happening. So I just said, I'm shooting this for myself. I'll do this for myself. Hollered at John. I said, John. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were mad. I was like, yo. I thought you were mad, honestly. I was like, yo, I'm flying you out, bro. <laughs> Come out, bro. Let's do it. So... Uh, Flew John. I had the, I, I like I had the whole idea, the whole video. I knew what I wanted to do. It was renting cars and shit. I did a whole flipping <laughs> list on where he was gonna go. Like everything, I went in. I was like, this is gonna be it. It's gonna be amazing. We just need the drone, we need the camera. Let's go. Exactly. Listen, <laughs> I was I was doing all of it. Like I was I was driving us. We drove to Palm Springs. If anyone knows what Palm Springs is, that's like four, four hours. And then we went in the fucking. Uh, excuse my language. We went into the blistering heat, like it was like fifty degrees. Fifty degrees. I, I say to everyone, like literally everything overheated. <laughs> the car overheated. The phone overheated. The drone overheated. The drone overheated, <laughs> and our conversation even got overheated. Like it was a lot. Like man, so that, that was as a test in time. It was a test in time, but here we are still doing it, man. We're still making amazing stuff. And I mean, the videos that we shot was, it was interesting. Cause I mean, even in terms of figuring it out, yeah. like we drove out to Palm Springs, we knew we wanted that kind of a setting, mm -hmm. but then we found this amazing mirror house. Oh. 
Which it was shutting down like a week later. No, the same. That was the last day. That was the last day. That okay, was wow. the last day. It was like, the this crazy, is the last day. The craziest day. location. All of that kind of stuff. Like a whole happening. house in the middle of the desert mm -hmm. made entirely out of mirrors. Yeah. Like, I don't, like, you're going to have to check out his video. What was it for? For um, oh, oh, If You Pay Me. Pay Me, yeah. Check out the video for F You Pay Me yeah. on Mayday's YouTube. Yeah. The video is mad. Like, yeah. it was shot literally on a shoestring between yeah. the two of us. Yeah. There's yeah. even a shot where you needed someone throwing keys to you and you held the camera for me yeah. to throw exactly. the keys to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it was literally just us and a couple of friends helped out. Like, yeah. cars helped out. Cars helped out, and, um, my good friend. And the lady friend. with the restaurant. Yeah, and Yeah, she came through. But literally, just us. And finding locations like that was just, mm -hmm. it was crazy because we didn't know that was even there. Yeah, man. Definitely completely crazy. Completely crazy. And then, so like a lot of people feel like that was a big budget video. Like when they see it, like that was us too. <laughs> I like, wish they knew just, what we did to him. Yo, to make that happen. <laughs> oh my, I wish that's when I needed my GoPro. I didn't have my GoPro yeah. for the behind the scenes, but it was a lot. But what was great is that's what got me a distribution deal. Uh, with Orchard so it's just been amazing just yeah so blessings man and also on that shoot you learned to be a makeup artist oh make <laughs> <laughs> well it was no it was it that was that was six months shoot. later that was six months later okay. so so once we did that one now and I got my distribution deal I was like bro I want to shoot four videos in LA <laughs> in one week in yo one week. <laughs> yo I gotta release that footage though but that was that was a taxing time because like John didn't even know. I didn't have nowhere for us to stay when he was on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I yeah. I got to stay at the trap house. You got to stay at the trap house for a day. We we was bouncing around different places. Air mattress. Uh, my good friend Crystal. Love you, Crystal. Um, Tiff. Tiff. Love you, Tiff. Like I had a couch at Tiff's. I was yeah, you got the couch at. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. really comfortable yeah. at Tiff's. Blessings. But yeah, man, it was that was the hustle, and I just was like. The thing, the thing that was getting me the most is like, yo, my good friend is here and he's helping me out, like helping me out. I need to make this work. And all of the little blocks, I was just getting so far. I was like, mm. no, like I need this to work. Like, cause man, I put you through your pace this man. We did some walking, yeah, it like, was, it was oh, a good, man. For me as a challenge, as a mm. creative challenge, it was incredible because I've never shot a music video with no budget before. Yeah. Like literally no budget. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I want to shoot a video, but there's, there's not much of a budget. Yeah. But they've got like a couple grand yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to rent some lighting and to, yeah. you know, to get some hands on deck. Yeah. But this was just me and you, my backpack, <laughs> yeah. which you know weighs a crazy, yeah. crazy amount. Yeah. And we just, we made it happen. And I think, I think I loved about it is we had to figure stuff out. Figure stuff out. We had to find our own locations. And yes. it was, again, like I said about you becoming a makeup artist, there was yeah. a video where he needed to be a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> and so we just found some special effects shot yeah. randomly. Like, yeah, I was like, yeah, we're going to this one. And <laughs> I was like, you guys got any makeup? I'm like, yeah, cool. Have you got any like, scars? <laughs> yeah. And then just boom, I just literally, there was, they had a, the um, thingy mirror. Yeah, the makeup station. Makeup station. I just applied it there. And I just went, whoop, oh, cool. And it looked all right. Yeah, it looked, actually all, right. looked all right. Yeah, so. And then that was our starting location from the video. So we yep. just started walking and filming from there. Started walking and filming from there. And then, boom, we have, we have a video, we have a few videos out, we shot man. shot a lot. We shot a lot, bro. But I, I think one of the things I learned that was really useful on that trip was just to keep the camera rolling. Keep it Cause rolling. Because there were so many moments where if I turned the camera off, we would have missed gold, like the police car. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah I told yeah. the guys about that. Yeah, yeah. So we was that that was the same zombie video as well, and we was walking now, and it was literally like, uh, I heard, I just said, woo, woo, woo. I said, bro, yo, get that, just whatever in it, and then and then I just literally started just walking like a zombie, and then it stopped right beside me, and I was like, oh shit. Bear in mind, the police jump. At, we're in America. We're in LA, the police jump out, guns in hand, yeah. and go into a house. Shotguns. I'm in, shotguns in hand. I'm hearing sirens and I'm in LA. I was like, should we? Are, we, are they coming for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was like, no, keep rolling, keep rolling. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, at least I'll have evidence if it's us. Yeah, but, but when they pulled over, that's I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. I just quickly. And man's, man's got yeah. scars in his face. Yep. Looking like a zombie. Yep. And I'm like, I just beg they don't pay attention to us. And oh, luckily, man. they didn't even pay attention to us. They went into their building and parked right by where he was right standing. By, yeah. So we just shot. Yeah, so that, like, just, yeah, that became a scene. Made it came a scene. <laughs> I love it. Ridiculous. I love it. I love it, though. But that's where, that's it, where it has to be. It works so perfectly because the way you edited the video, yeah. like the sirens come in and the music cuts. Yeah. 
and then you get back into it. Yeah. Yes, you have, that's the video for Never There. Yeah, Never There. Again, I'll put the link in it below this so you guys can watch it. Yes, indeed. But that was a moment. And that I think learning moment. just to keep the camera rolling was, for me, an invaluable lesson that I've carried on ever since. For sure. That was, that was a pretty special one. After LA, so you've been to LA how many times? A lot, a lot, a lot of time. Definitely lost count. This is the first year that I've not been there since 2013. Wow. Crazy. I've been, I'm, I'm normally there every year, at least once. I was there last year. That was amazing. That was great. Really good. I enjoyed that. Um, connected, like, yeah, my, my boy Points and Cars, they've got a studio there. And I was just, I was managing the studio. That's amazing. So it blessed me to be able to, like, use it during the day and then when they started working during the night working with them just that was the flow man and so it was amazing so just created a lot of stuff and yeah see what now, happens with that now pre-pandemic you obviously we've shot like five videos yeah you've got a distribution deal now yeah. like you're building up quite a momentum and you had plans to do a project for brazil yep yeah. and then stuff. a whole pandemic happened yeah like, well, how did that affect Oh the man! Movement. All right, but it's been a listen. When it happened, because I was so I, I was in LA just before the pandemic happened for like the Grammy times, and then I wanted to go out in March again, and then the pandemic happened. Lockdown. So it was lockdown. It's like, do I go? Do I get locked down in in the states or do I stay in the UK? And I said, Nah, stay in the UK. I don't know. I don't know what's going mm. on. I don't know what's going on. So I said, Stay in the UK. <laughs> Stayed in the UK, effect, definitely affected me. That like, it was just just surreal times. Really, it's like what mm. is going on here? Like it was so different. <laughs> it felt like an apocalypse, really. <laughs> um, and then obviously with the whole George Floyd stuff happening, it sparked convers it sparked a lot of conversation. And I just like when that well, I, it happened, and I went into the to the WhatsApp group, the the Mandem WhatsApp group, and I was like, yo, what can we do? Just start, just sparked the conversation. And then the ultimate thing was I was saying like, man, the West, this Western world isn't really for us anyway. We better start looking towards the Caribbean and Africa. Like, and that energy, just even saying that, putting that out there, mm. just has shifted certain you things. You pivoted majorly. Oh, from majorly. That point. So I started to just like more folk. Like I've always been doing stuff with with a Jamaican influence. There's, that's in heritage, there. right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's where my, um, both my grandparents are from. My dad was born there as well. My mom was born in Liverpool, but still grandparents are from um, Jamaica. So, and I've, I've actually spent, I, used, I went to school there from five to seven. Okay. So like, I went to- You spent yeah. some of your childhood there. Yeah, so it's, it's there. Mm. Um, so yeah, like literally I started to just dig deeper into my roots. I was like starting making tracks just all, you know, yards, Jamaican vibes. And then I just built up a, bank, a load of tracks and then I started selecting the best ones. And then I just went to John's. I was like, I was like, you're playing, playing some tracks to John. And I was like, I was like, bro, you think you could do this in, in Jamaica? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Why yeah, not? Yeah, why not? I was like, I yeah. mean, we've already done the madness. Why yeah, not? I was like, I was, I was, so, I was so surprised that you would want to, because again, I felt like I, I like the other processes were so grueling. I was thinking, John, John ain't gonna want to do this. <laughs> I was like, I, I, it was a lot, man. I like but the challenge. There you go, man. Blessing, man. So John was like, yeah, sure. So I started looking about a date, and then kind of had a date in November. Then that wasn't working. Then it was like, actually, it's better to be in December and then get John to come through in January. So, boom. You flew out? Flew out first, checked the areas and tried to get locations and Bear stuff. Bear in mind, it's still relatively COVID times. Oh, it's always oh, COVID times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. We ain't back to normal yet. Oh, it's for sure COVID times. <laughs> Believe you me. The fact that we got there like was... I, I didn't know they would let me in the country. Well, this this is part of the story as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> always a story. Come January now, flight got cancelled. John's flight got cancelled. Then my flight got cancelled. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, uh, okay, what do I do here? <laughs> and then I kid you not, an hour later, a good friend, Carla Marie, Marie Williams, hit me up. I checked her the week before where she was. Um, amazing songwriter, look her up. Carl is incredible. Incredible. Blessed. Yes. Um, done stuff with Beyonce, Freedom, all types of big stuff. And she just, she called me 
literally an hour uh, after I found out that my flight was delayed, and she's like, "What are you up to?" And I was like, "I was like, I'm here." She's like, "She's like, because I'm thinking you should um, come work with me. Let's just work." I was like, "I right, bet." Like, she said, "Stay over at hers." I was like, "What?" Where was she? All right, uh, in Ochi, in Ochi, and at the time I was in Kingston. I was like, "Bet," because you know what, <laughs> my flight just got cancelled, so I don't know what's going on. So I'm just working with Carla for months. We're just working with some dope Jamaican talent. Writing, um, I'm writing, I'm engineering, making beats. It was an amazing time, man. I loved it. And yeah, and then at the end of my trip now, I was like, I got to try and get John. Because every time I was checking every week after week, couldn't get any flights. It was just like, mm. no, can't, no flights, no, one in, no, no one flights, out. no. Yep. Just, I was there for six months, <laughs> six months. But it was great. You, you grew dreadlocks. I grew locks. <laughs> I, I, it was growing before that. So it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like this was my path. Yeah. It was, it was almost like this is my path, man. So yeah, then we had a week. Yeah, and I was just so nervous. I was like, please make John get through. Cause I was like, ah, oh, I don't know. What if they don't allow him through? I was, man, it was a tough time, but mm. he got through. And then, yeah, we started just working, man. And uh, I, again, I had in my head, cause we did like four videos the last time in LA. I was like, let's do five videos. <laughs> and Ambitious. yeah, we ended up doing- Two and a half? Basically, call it, Call it one and two quarters. <laughs> That's one and a half. Yeah, but in that form, so they two can, different. they can, yeah, yeah two yeah, yeah. quarters of two, two other songs. Two other songs. Um, yeah. We but, got a whole video, at least yeah, one. Yeah, but yeah, so an amazing magic moment happened as well. Like, so during the, during where it just felt like, man, it felt like things were against this happening. Like, and I was just like, no, man. And I was just in a, just, down energy. John's doing his best to keep my vibes up, but I just, I just, just. I was wasn't just trying to remind it. you about your purpose. Yeah, and it wasn't. It just wasn't. I, I a wanted lot of things to. are like rubbing you up the wrong way. Yep, yep, yep. Kind of like you had a negative voice in your in your vicinity that was kind yep. of telling you things can't happen. Yep. And you were like, no, but they must. Yeah. They must I was happen. like, what? Ooh, like how the whole it... golf club. You're like, yeah. oh, it's not going to work. They're not yeah. going to just let you do it. Yeah. Well, let's go and ask. Said, let's just go. <laughs> what what they can say is no. Yeah. We already have a no when we're telling ourselves no anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you went and then created something from that as well. <laughs> but, um, what it was, and then I spoke speaking to my good friend Vernon as well. And he's there speaking the words of wisdom, but still, I just wasn't happening. And then I just played, started playing my own music. <laughs> <laughs> and then all the like the, it was literally like I was talking to myself mm. like in success as a journey for example and I just was like wait what am I? yo I'm talking to myself like and it just I started uplifting the energy and then I listened to a track that I had I didn't have heard for like since I made it and I was like bro I can do something with this I had the video idea everything started flooding it was a hot it was half done um but then I had a uh a studio session with uh, Dre Island, amazing, amazing talent. So gifted. Fire. That guy's something else. Yeah. Because I got to see him work. Oh man. And it's, it blew my mind. It, it was amazing. It was just a flow. We was in that flow. The good energy was flowing. Tell people how that panned out. Like we just showed up to his house. Showed up to his house. He's got his studio equipment set up in that. And yeah, just I played, I just played him the song. I said, I, this is, I, I didn't even think he was, I wouldn't think of him featuring on it or whatever, mm. but I, he said like, play me something. And I was, I, that was the first track I played him. And he was like, yeah, man, I, mean, I, I, mean, I feel this one still like, and I was like, Went right. over to his piano, started playing a little something. Yeah. And then he just was like, he's like, all right, cool. For, well, I played him another track and he was like, he's like, okay, okay. That's dope as well. He's like, but, but the first let's one, back. let's go to the first one. Let's load it up. I was like, all right, load it up. And then brah, he just then literally, and then. There and there and there. Came up with a whole verse. Freestyle the vibe and uh, and he was like, "What do you think?" I was like, "What? <laughs> what? <laughs> this That's is the tune." <laughs> yo, record that right now. <laughs> I was like, "Strike while the iron's hot." Yo, it, there you go. <laughs> we struck while the iron was hot, and therefore this is why we have an amazing song, and that song's there. We need. I wanted the video for it. I was so pushing for it, but we'll see how it pans out. Cause uh, I linked up with him 
when I was in New York a few months ago, because I saw that he was performing, I was in DC, so I was like, I'm just gonna go see him. You and check him, yeah. Checked him, and the first thing he said, yo, you're here, I'm here, we need to shoot the video. And I was like, ah, <laughs> ah. So I'm there scrambling, like, yo, John, what, like, can you make it? So, oh, man, can't make it. Uh, hollered at the next guy, it was kind of flowing, then then um, Dre had to go to LA. So he's actually still in LA right now, oh, wow. like just working on his stuff. So, But when it's supposed to happen, it will happen. So we're good. We just keep it moving, man. Yeah, I hear that. But yeah, that's, that's a whole movie, guys. <laughs> you got a lot of good BTS footage from that as well. A lot, for real. So I need, so I'm just here. I've got a lot of footage, guys. I've got a lot of footage. And it's just finding the time to edit it. But I think I'm overthinking probably because I'm like, how am I editing it? Mm. So I sort of want to feel like I know how I want it to edit it. But I'm just going to give it to the people and then move on because I, f- I feel like you have to make space. Mm. Like, just put it out there so I don't so I don't feel like... I, I think it's because I feel I've got a lot of footage why I haven't done some new, new mm. stuff. So let me just push out what's already there and just keep it moving. So... That's it. I feel like you have to make room. Exactly. You know, if you don't, what's the, what is that saying about like, you know, a window closes and a door opens or something? Yeah. I think it's the same kind of thing when you yeah. stored up a lot of content and you're not putting it out. Same reason why I started just putting this out. Yep. I didn't want to bank it up because I feel like one, it gets, it's old. Mm-hmm. So I've lost the passion for it. Mm-hmm. But also, like you said earlier, the timing is real. Like it's, yeah. this is actually currently happening so people yeah. can relate to it. They can follow it. Yeah. Then they're speaking about what's actually happening right yeah. now. <laughs> it just makes more sense. Yeah. And I think you can be too precious. I, I often feel like I get in my own way a lot. I want everything to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But who was it that I, I think you, I sent the video to you. I commented on the guy's video. He was talking about how there's so much content today Yeah. that you can't be too precious about how good it is. Facts. Because at the end of the day, you might you might make the best piece of content and mm-hmm. you spent weeks on it, but you throw it out there and within a within an hour, yeah, it's swamped by all of th- hundreds of thousands of pieces of content that have been shared within the past hour. Yeah, what he said was consistency and volume yes. is the key. Yes, I agree. Doesn't matter how good it is. I agree. Just keep putting out content because you don't know when people are going to come to it. I agree. Like someone might be watching. We've recorded this. 2022. Yeah. Someone might watch this video next year. Yeah, or, or even in two 10 years. years. How 10 many years videos you come across on YouTube? For real. That someone shared with you and, oh, this is a sick video. Yeah. So much stuff just has a life that you can't control. Yeah. And I've, I've, been, trying to, I've been trying to wrestle with that myself about not being too much of a perfectionist and just trying to work on volume and consistency. Bro, you know what it is, yeah? So because of this whole pandemic thing, right, or a big spark, rather, has made me a lot more spiritually aligned. In what sense? Just in the sense of understanding that this isn't about me or you or anyone. This is about the masses. This is about us putting out what we're here to do. Like, it's it's not a vanity thing. And I think I was more on a vanity thing. Like, like I want to be a part of the industry. I want to be doing this. Mm-hmm. And now my 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 process of sh- has shifted because I'm like no people need to see this because seeing that I can do this is gonna spark someone to like, oh what may they do I can do that as well like mm. and that's what it's about we're supposed to inspire each other by being ourselves and shining bright to like inspire others do you mm. know what I'm saying because that's what people have done for me that's what people have done for you right yeah. you've seen that especially the ones that look like us do you know what I'm saying it's like you can do it too so just do it so me hesitating it's like what? what's that about I've got to do it for the, the mass I've got to do it to to actually show how grateful I am just to have life you mm. know what I'm saying so that's that's where I'm at right now where it's like the mu- and it, and do and being like that just aligns you even better with who you are because it's not about impressing anyone. It's not about, oh, like, like yeah, this will get me a million views. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm mm. not doing it for that. And I, and I feel like, especially when I said, like, ticket to LA, it was like, oh, I, I need to get to LA. But there wasn't really a real purpose behind it. Yeah. And now there's purpose. And now it's connecting in a way where 
Like the love I get from from certain tracks, I know it's authentic. So mm. I don't care if it has fifty views. I'm so like, I, I just so need I one person you, to be inspired. Like how has I guess social media? How what kind of journey have you been on with social media and how that affected the type of music that you wanted to make and the type of music you're making now? Like what's the journey yeah. that you've gone on through that? Yeah. So as I was saying, like the the first the tracks I was making, if I'm totally honest, like. So I met Semtex, DJ Semtex. And again, I think that was an impressive thing. I love the music I make, don't get me mm. wrong, but like he said, like he, he gave me a vibe of this is the vibes that he's looking for. This is what's hot right now. This is, yeah. And I was like, I could do that, man. That's easy, mate. Mm. And then literally in a, it was less than a week, but I had a meeting with him the next week. And then I had like these five tracks ready to go. And he was like, what? He was gassed and was like, yo, started just hollering at bare people for mm. me. And I did it for that reason, to just show that I could do it. And this is what I've been realizing. I've been doing a lot of trying to prove myself to people when I need to prove myself for myself. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Prove it to myself that I can do this. That's, that's more important than outwards projecting like and that. And how has that changed your sound? Changed it completely, because like, it's definitely more on a spiritual sense, as I said. It's definitely on a uplifting vibes. Like I speak, like I'm. It's it's like I'm speaking. It's speaking to myself that I realize a lot of the time. But then You're through, lyrically, lyrically, yeah, I feel like it's a lot of motivational type vibes, like and all that. But I've got two sides that I'm 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 bridging. Like I've got the side where it's like uplifting, righteous vibes. But then I just got that, I want the energy to lick your head off. Like, I just want you to just <laughs> feel it emotionally, like just hit you in a certain way because all my favorite artists, that's what they, they do for me. Like Busta Rhymes is my favorite no, um, His energy artist. is uncomparable. And that is, so yeah, yeah, that's yeah. in me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so when you see Pay Me, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I want that kind mm. of comedic energy in there. So, so I can be quiet serious in a sense in in part of my music and then i'm just easy breezy just having fun and that's that's the balance i'm looking to uh, yeah, continue I mean, you got here. squats and you got success as a journey exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> two that. very different sides you know of the saying? same coin exactly that and squats squats was supposed to um actually have will i am featuring oh snap yeah i played it to him he was like he's like yeah feature on it but again Strike while the iron's hot, guys. Just put the mic in front of him right there. Should have been right there. <laughs> right there, bro. I played it to him and he was loving it. And he was like, he started, he actually started coming up with a vibe of course there and then. And then, um, and then whatever, I think he had to go or something. Someone said something and kind of stopped the flow or something. He was like, he's like, oh, just come back tomorrow. Let's, we'll do this tomorrow. And I was like, okay, cool. Came back the next day. Nicole Scherzing is there, <laughs> David Guetta's there. So then they, so they was already busy. there. Yeah, he was quite busy. So I'm just there. But that was that was great to observe as well and just uh, see how they work. And he was like... What's Nicole Scherzinger like? Oh, she's so friendly. She's so down to earth, man. And I thought she'd be a bit moody, but... No, nah, she was so down to earth, man. I was actually helping with... Because uh, it was when... Uh, it was when she had like, the, she had like a boy group... Um, she was on X Factor and she had the boy group. Oh, yeah, she was a mentor, right? Mentor on the boy group thing and she was selecting songs and I was helping her select songs. Like, oh. yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, take that song because like people would love that one. She she didn't really know take that at the time, but it was cool. So then that happened and then we was like, all right, tomorrow? I was like, all right, cool. Came the next day and then he finally, and then at the end of that day, he was like, he was like, do you want to, uh, can you like vocal produce? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they were going to work in Abbey Road this time. It was like, yeah, come out and um, help me record Nicole. And I was like, all right, cool. Got there. But because he didn't like, again, he's like, love Will I Am, but he's, he's quite all over the place certain times. His mind moves at a million miles per a hour. A million miles per hour. <laughs> I don't, I'm not even sure if he's in the same dimension as us. He's not. He's, he's not. beyond. He's not. But, <laughs> but like the lesson I get from him is strike while the iron's hot. Mm. because he literally like will come up with everything there and then and make it happen there yeah. and then like I, I've heard him like just being on the phone with Justin Bieber like okay so we're gonna do it like this the video's yeah. gonna be like this and then it comes out just like that willpower just like that um, yeah 
exactly. It was it's been great, man. I've learned a lot from these amazing people and myself. So yeah. And what's yeah. coming next? Like what's what's the next step? So the next step is still still just taking it. So again, I used to put the pressure on myself. Now I'm a lot more like finding my equilibrium mm. and rather than attempting to do everything, I'm just whoever You're learning to delegate. Delegate. And whoever wants to be a part, like yeah, and having trust in them that they can do it. Because I think part of it was like not trusting that people execute it the way I want it and mm. yada yada yada. But it's like, no, let's 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 put the energy in them to know that they can do it because we're we've all got our talents and all capable. So let me t- trust in you and show that you can do it and you'll do it. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because when people Same have trusted... You did. That's exactly... You figured it out. You, you having trust in me makes me know I have to make this happen. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like i got to give back that same energy and uh, flow, with, flow with the universe. And just... you, you said you've got a song that you've created a video for already? Yes, so... Uh, Life is magic. <laughs> so hopefully that'll be out by the time this yeah. gets shown to the rest of the world. Yeah, and what's great about that, that was another story. <laughs> um, top of this year, I went out to Ghana, um, not knowing John was going to be there, and John is in Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. So um, I was like, I was, so he's, he was there for like a few days now, and I'm like, okay, what song? I was going through the song because I didn't know what song I wanted to record to. But then I was like, I'm just going to do a new one. And I was in such a good space as well that like being in Ghana. It was a great time to be there as well. Great time. And it was life changing, man, because it's such a vibe there. And I just felt so connected. And, I and just did you vibed. see the similarities I told you between Jamaica and Ghana? A lot of similarities. So many. The people. The people. like The land. Yeah. like Everything just, there's so many parallels between the two 100%, places 100 like if you haven't been have to go so yeah i just i created this new track and i just vibed with it loved it and we shot the video for it the next day <laughs> and then we As you do. yeah and then we and then we went on we got to our uh, gorilla style that we normally get onto and because we hadn't shot shot like in a while i wasn't really there with it but john Rem- kindly reminded me, bro, we do this. This is what we do. Yeah, because we, because, uh, fuck it, I'm going to say it. We was at um, Embassy Gardens. If anyone that's been to uh, Ghana would know about Embassy Gardens. So I was staying there now. And it's like, need a rooftop vibes. It's like. They got a rooftop? They got a rooftop. <laughs> it's, I was like, can we do that? So we went went to the top floor and, and found there was ladder you could we go didn't up. have to force it. It was just open access. It was just open. So how about that? It didn't break <laughs> break any entry, break or end. What's what's the term? Breaking and entering. Yeah, we didn't do that. We just technically with the rooftop, you breaking and exiting. But <laughs> yeah, exactly we right the to the top floor. So we yeah we did that and it was it was great. It was um, it was a little bit nerve wracking at points, and then John had me like uh, uh, leaning over the edge of the. <laughs> Just for the shot. Yes. And when I tell you, I was petrified. I'm not, I'm not really scared of heights, but I was just like, oh, shit. Like, I was like this. <laughs> I'm going to put the footage up uh, behind the scenes. I was just like this. <laughs> I was like, no, I can't do it like that. I just had to put one foot over and then that's what it was. Man. But it was a great experience. Uh, and then I mixed it in with some GoPro footage when I went to Cape Coast, which is mind-blowing, man. That's where... Everyone needs to check that place out. Yeah, that's 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 where the slaves were. They really departed for the Caribbean. Oh man, it was so. That place is crazy because you can feel the weight. Even man, like how many, hundreds of years later now, bro, you can still feel the weight of what those people went through, bro. To it's, go it's into the dun- go into this little small room where they had over two hundred and fifty slaves in there, packed in, cooped up in there, and unimaginable. Yo, you're walking. And your foot is sliding, and you're not realizing why. The guy, the guy said that's that's feces still. From that's how much they had to literally stand and sleep in in that shit. Literally, mm. it like I was just so like on a somber mood that yeah, day. It was it was extremely. Like, humbling. You, you have anything hard? <laughs> go to man, Cape Coast, man. Go and feel that. That's it's 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 
a lot. So this is a part of the spiritual journey I'm talking about, and it's been a lot, man. But I've I've enjoyed it, and here we are. We're gonna we're gonna give the music to the people and inspire the people. Cause that is it. <laughs> so just for the benefit of everyone who's you know seen you talk now, heard about some of your music, where can they find? more about Mayday Carter, where can they follow you and connect with your pages? Yep, so Eric, just, yeah, Mayday Carter, like Instagram, C -A -R -T -E -R. YouTube channel. C -A -R -T -E -R. Yep, that's correct. It should be down here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're telling me I've got graphics. I ain't got graphics yet. <laughs> this is episode two or three. I ain't got graphics yet. Okay, ease me up. Who knows, it might, it might just be a little <laughs> special thing. Yeah, I might I might be able to make it happen. Maybe, but yeah. So um, yeah, Mayday Carter everywhere. Just Google me, YouTube me, uh, follow the journey, man. Um, I'm, I'm definitely taking things to another level. So yeah, um, I'm excited. Awesome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Appreciate though. you. Thank you guys for watching and listening for however long this has been. Yeah, I don't, don't time them, and there is no <laughs> limits here. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. I really hope you've enjoyed that conversation and taken something from it. If you have any comments or questions or feedback, uh, I welcome it all and I'll put it in, put them in the re relevant section so I can actually check it out. And I'll try and respond if you don't just like swear at me. Yes. Actually, do. I might respond if you swear at me anyway. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for watching and please uh, subscribe, tell your friends, share it with other people as well if you've got anything out of the conversation. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, this bro. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Wait. That was fire. Done. <laughs> Cut.